Little times in my childhood When we traveled so far By nightfall how weary I'd grow Father's arms would slip round me and gently he'd say, my child, we are going home. Go God's house, isn't it? Amen. We ought to be ex Hey, listen, y'all. How many of y'all have ever asked somebody to come to church in your life? <laughs> you know, a lot of times the people we ask, they ain't excited to be in church. I've brought people to church in my life, and they're not excited. But you know why they're not? Because we ain't real excited about it either. We're going to have to change something, March, ain't we? If we want people to be excited about being here, we need to be excited about being here. It's good to be in God's house, isn't it? Amen. Amen. It sure is good to be in God's house. Let's get over to the book of Acts and, and, and chapter 13 today, if you would, with me. Acts and chapter 13. Uh, how many of you today love to do yard work? Oh, just got struck by lightning there. <laughs> My wife raised her hand. She, she literally does. She likes doing yard work. Lynn loves it so much. Y'all were supposed to say, how much does Lynn love to do yard work? How much does she love it? My wife loves to do it so much that she will plant a plant somewhere and then let it grow for a year or two and then say, you know, I don't like that plant there. Let's dig it up <laughs> and put it somewhere else. And we'll go try that for a little while. She just, which creates a whole new hole. We got to dig Jimmy. Whole new set of problems, you know. Can we make the plant live? 
Uh, down at the lake, I have a problem with the plant, and uh, I don't even know what it is. I've cut it down twice, and, uh, and you know which one I'm talking about. I mean, the thing has all kinds of stuff grows off of it, and it chokes out other trees. I mean, it gets, it's got this root system. That I, 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 mean, I don't even know what it is, but I, I literally have cut it. Every time I cut it down, it comes back even stronger. And, uh, and it comes back even harder, Sammy, you know, the second time. I was like, what the heck? It's not kudzu. I know. Huh? Wisteria. Lynn says it's wisteria. Okay. Not kudzu. I know what that is. I'm not completely stupid. I'm just partially stupid, but I'm okay with that. I'm not completely there yet. But this thing keeps coming back. But this year, me and Matthew one day, when he was down there with us, he, Matthew always, Matthew, I love Matthew, when he will go with us down there, he will say, what are we doing, Dad? <laughs> like, are we going to go sit around and do nothing, or is there a plan in place? And uh, we have to trick him. I'll, I'll be honest with you, we lied to him. And, and we're not doing anything. We're going to have a good time. Yard work. And... Uh, but me and, me, and, me and Matthew, I gave up this time and, and, and one of the trips for me and Max, and, and I gave up on this plant, and I decided the only way I was going to make this thing go away was to pull it up by its roots. Do you all agree with that? Yeah. The, old, the old adage, get to the root of the problem. And I, did not, I could not believe all the root system that this thing had in it. It was, it was craziness. And uh, as we pulled that up, I was like, holy cow, there's roots that go everywhere with this thing. And, uh, but that, that's, that's the way you solve a problem. You got to get to the root of it, right? Okay. See, so today what I want to talk about is America's problem, and today I am going to make an attempt to get to the root of the problem. I'm going to make a, an attempt, Jimmy. I am. I'm going to make an attempt to get to the root of the problem, because that's that we we see so many problems that are out there, and I'm going to throw some out there, but they're not the problem. So we got to get to the root of the problem. You know, to, to and y'all read my verse, and I get it. Like, where's Joey going with this? So we'll go ahead and read it, get it out of the way. So we can go get to the root of the problem. So the Bible says in Acts 13, 9 and 10, it says, And then, then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost. I pray today the Holy Ghost fills this room. I pray today that the Holy Ghost fills me. Amen. Set his eyes on him and said, O oh, full of, of subtlety, and all mischief, thou child of the devil. That's a, that's a hard line. You ever yelled at somebody and did that? Sammy, like, y'all, child of the death. That's, that's a hard statement. Thou enemy of righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, this, this morning to God, Lord, we are so grateful, we are so thankful for all the many wonderful things that you are doing for us. God, this morning I pray that, that, that God's Spirit would be among us. God, I, I pray that God's Spirit would be here, that it would give us an understanding. God, I, I pray that God's Spirit would be here to let us see the true light. God, I just pray that you'd be with us at this moment in time. Lead us, guys, and direct us as only you can. And it's in your sweet, holy name we pray, Lord. Amen and amen. amen. So the, the only way that, that we can get... To the problem is get as the as we've all learned is, is to get to the root of the problem. Okay, so our country is, is going through a lot of things, and and I know that that some of you will agree with me, some of you will disagree with me, some of you will look at things in a different light, and I don't know if Joey's looking at that in the same right, but our country's problem, and I'm going to say some things that you may not like. Our country's problem is not racism. It is not. We we're, we're not. It's so y'all may not like that. There are people that may hear this and they say, Joe, we have a racist problem in America. And I would say, no, we don't. We don't have a racist problem in America. Our country's problem is not Democratic and Republican, not getting political in here. It is not about blue and red states. It is not. There are people who fight on the Internet every day about political issues. They, they bicker with each other. I, I scratch my head on that one a lot of times, but they bicker with each other online, and uh, sometimes with their friends, sometimes with their family. My favorite part is they will bicker with people they don't even know. That's amazing in and of itself. It really is. They will, they will fight with people that they do not even know, and, and knowing that they're not ever going to change their opinion. But the problem is not a Democrat or a Republican, a blue or a red state problem. It is not a, it is not a problem of the new 
found letters, and I apologize that that offends people, the LBQT, XYOZ, whatever that is. That is also not the problem in our country today. It is not the problem. There are people that say, Joey, you know, there's a lot of things that are going on out there. It is not finances. It is not the economy state of our country. That is not the problem of the United States today. That is not the problem we are, we are assessed in. That is not where we're at either. I want to get to the root of the problem. That's what I want to do. The root of the problem is, it is very simple. Oh, man, I saved it for all this to just say one thing. We can pack it up and go home. It's the difference between right and wrong. That is all there is to it. And we want to talk about, I want to talk about the father of righteousness today. I want to talk about the father of evil. And then I want to talk about, lastly, the problem of the church. Okay? I want to talk about, first of all, the father of righteousness. 1 Corinthians 1.30 says this, But by his doing, ye are in Christ Jesus, who became to us the wisdom from God, and the righteousness and sanctification and redemption. There is but one father, Kenny. There is. Y'all agree with that? There's a father. There's a father that is in heaven. That father, that father which is in heaven today, represents, listen to what I'm about to say, you, you listen to this very closely, the Almighty represents all things that are righteous. Now, I want to use the word right, but some would be confused if I use the word right because, unfortunately, in the world we live in today, Sammy, we can't determine what right is anymore. There, there are different levels of right. What I want you to understand is that there is a line, there is a line that exists. It is, it is in, not in the sand. It is a throughout alternative, and it is an almighty father that represents everything that is righteous. Now, I know that everybody in this room, every person that is sitting here today has an opinion. Listen to me. That opinion is only correct if it is lined up with the righteousness of the Father. Y'all listen to that again. Y'all listen to me very closely. Your opinion, Sammy, is only valid. Your opinion is only correct your opinion only has meaning if it is lined up with the righteousness of the Father, Dennis. Think about that. Hey, listen to me. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I have said some things in my life in teaching, and I will say when I get there, I'll say, this is my opinion. And I want you all to listen to what I'm about to say about my opinion. My opinion is absolutely worthless. Listen to this. Y'all hear me? So everybody say that with me. That one y'all get. Joey's opinion is worthless. Y'all say that today. Joey's say it really loud. Joey's, Joey's Good. So y'all were so sporting about that. I want you to repeat this one with me. My opinion is worthless. My opinion is worthless. Say it real loud. My opinion is so, so once we understand that, Jimmy, we all can get on the same page, can't we? What I need us as Christians today is we've got to find value in righteousness. We've got to find value in what is actually right. We've got to seek out what is the truth and what is right. There is a line that, that sits here, and we think that there are so many places, that we call it the far left, we call it the far right. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. The, the line represents two things. It represents good and it represents evil. God the Father represents good and all things good. Now, I'm going to use some examples to you today. For example, I'm just using this as a for example. Abortion cannot be righteous or right. It can't be. Can I, can I get an amen on that? Amen. It cannot, listen to what I just said, it cannot be righteous, it cannot be right, irregardless of my opinion, Okay? My opinion say, Joey, you don't know this, or Joey, you don't know that. I hear what you're saying, but it cannot be according to the Almighty and to what he said. So today, my father, and I'm going to be, I hope it's yours too, I hope is the father of righteousness. He represents something. You know what our, our father does? He represents righteousness. 
You know our Father has a goal? Y'all know that? You know what? The, the Father has a goal. Scott, you ever thought about that? The Almighty Father, you know, every, it's cool to have goals, isn't it? I think it's cool to have goals, but the God, Almighty Father has have, have goals. Lawrence, he does. Y'all know what that goal, goal is? It's to, see, it's to see people redeemed. He has. The Almighty, the Almighty Father, doesn't he? Said, the righteous Father wants this sinful mankind, wants this sinful mankind to be redeemed. Y'all was trying to line this up with my verse, you're not going to, because the verse is going a lot of places, so y'all just be thinking with me. I need you to understand there is only one right, and it is defined by the Almighty. It doesn't matter what our government says. Listen to me now. It doesn't matter what our media says, and I'm going to be honest with you, and lastly, bring it home, and it doesn't matter my opinion of the situation, okay? Is everybody there with me? The only right... And I want to say, give it with a big praise God and heaven above. The only right that exists is through God's word and his righteousness. Amen. Amen. Y'all there with me? So that's the only right that exists. And everything that we, you know what? We have deacons and we have deacons meetings and we have church and we try to lead the church. And and, and I, and I I have have to be careful with this. Sometimes in, in making decisions for the church, Y'all listen to me now. I have to be careful. Jimmy, we have to be careful. Guy, we have to be careful. Lawrence, we have to be careful that, that I am not doing something that's self-indulging or something that, that's what I want to do. I, as a leader, Sammy, you as a minister, I as, deacon, as leaders, we have got to do what's right, irregardless of what we think. And that's hard to do a lot of times, isn't it? Sometimes because we all, and I'm, I'm trying to bring this into church, but because sometimes we all in nature want to go things, and we do. We have things that are personal to us. But sometimes in my life I've had to stop and say, man, that got personal to me. I need to seek and do what's right. Is everybody there with me? Y'all with, they're just, just, we've got to seek to do what's right. And that's not a criticism about what goes on, but we've got to seek to do what's right. That's hard for a lot of Christians today. Because we don't see it as a black and white. We see it as a, our mindset is set up a little different today. And we're going to get to that. Our mindset is that we don't see it as black and white. And I don't want to hate to use those two colors. Because then you say, Joey, it is about racism. And it's not. We don't see it as black and white. We see it as gray. We see it as something else. And we can't depict what's even right anymore. We have a tough time trying to figure out what is right. You know, Joey, the media is telling me this, and they're telling me this. And I, so it's hard for me, and I get it, I, it's hard for the church to see what, what right is anymore. You know, can I offend that person? You know, if he says that he's this, and, I, I, and, and the Bible says that that's wrong, but if I say something about him, am I wrong? What's right? What does God represent? Y'all say it with me. Righteousness. Right. What does God represent? Righteousness. I'm going to tell you something. Righteousness applies to everybody. So it's irrelevant about how I feel about the situation. It's irrelevant about how I think about the situation. It's irrelevant about my opinion of the situation. Righteousness is what God said it is. It's that simple to me, y'all. It really is. Now, here's where it becomes fun in this verse. Because just as much as there's a God of good, who is the Father, there's a God of evil. What's his name? Everybody want to know his name? We got, he got a lot of names, though, don't he? You know who's Satan, the devil, the elves above? He got a lot of fun names. Oh, Paul called this guy out, and he says, Thou child of the devil, thou enemy of what? Y'all see the word up there? Enemy of what? But I want y'all to notice what the guy was doing. The Bible says, Paul said to him, Will thou not cease to pervert the right ways? Wait a minute now. He didn't say, go do something wrong. He said, go take something that's good and pervert. Now, a lot of you in this room, 
Do y'all know what a pervert is? Y'all laugh? Did you, Marcy, why'd you laugh so hard? <laughs> now, the word pervert in this, this, this use, in this terminology, in this English, is not a meaning of an individual. It is, it is a descriptive term. Looked it up in the dictionary. Pervert means to alter the course. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, and I'm going to give you some examples. I'm, I want y'all, I want, y'all got to get in here with me. Sometimes you got like, you got to sink before you can swim. You know what I'm talking about, Tim? Sometimes you go, like, where's Joey going with this? So instead of, if, 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 for example, Matthew's 21, listen to this. Matthew's 21, in the, in the eyes and the laws of the state of this country, what does Matthew get to do now? Drink legally. Drink alcoholic beverages legally. Now, Matthew may not want to drink alcoholic beverages legally. In the mind of Matthew, Matthew, if I may, in the mind of Matthew, Matthew may view that as being wrong. Is that okay? He may view that as being wrong. Now, the only way that the devil, if let's, can I just for just a second, can I just for, just for giggles this morning, if y'all would with me, can we just say, for just a second, and you don't have to argue with me, say me what the Bible says. I'm just using an example. Can we just say drinking alcohol is wrong for just this moment in time? Okay, would y'all just give me that? So would y'all just give me that for a second? No, 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 drinking alcohol is not wrong. I'm uh, listen, I'm not arguing. I'm not trying to create argument. Y'all listen to me because, see, that's what the devil likes to do here. He wants to pervert what's righteous. So... If the devil's going to get Matthew to drink alcohol, he's going to have to get him convinced at how something good is maybe not necessarily, or something wrong is not necessarily, not necessarily wrong. You, you see what I'm saying? I, I've got, instead of going out and saying, Matthew, here's a, here's a bottle of Jack Daniels, which Matthew would say no to, I'm not going to drink the Jack Daniels, that's stupid, I know that that's wrong, he's got to change Matthew's mindset. He's got to pervert his thinking of good. Y'all listen to what I'm saying. He's got to pervert his thinking of good. I'm going to tell you something. You, do you want to know what is wrong with the church before I even get there? The perversion of what we know to be good. That is our problem. We have perverted what is good. And we've tried to justify it. So now here the devil is and says, well, I can't convince Matthew. He, he knows that it's wrong. It's legal. I, I, I pushed him to a new place, Deacon Life. He's 21 by the eyes of the country. The first pat on the back is, hey, Matthew, you're good to go. You're free. The laws of the state of Georgia, the laws, the federal laws of the United States are not going to keep you from drinking alcohol. You're free. But Matthew says, oh, no. Oh, no, devil, in my mind, in my heart, that's wrong. I choose to believe that that's wrong. So the only way that I can get him to do that is to pervert his way of thinking. So the, the devil knows, well, I can't get him by just saying I'm going to go that, so I've got to pervert and start trying to tell you. You know what? Y'all know what the greatest tool the devil uses. Are y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? My opinion, Sammy, is when the devil says it's just not that big a deal. Listen, old brother Joe, it's not that big a deal. And if he can convince Matthew that it's not that big a deal, then Matthew goes on a journey, gets his first sip, goes second journey. That's the next thing, you know, what's the big deal? I'm drinking one, drink whatever, life goes on. You can't be an alcoholic, church members, until you drink the first one. Can I get an amen on that? Hey, listen, I'm, hey, I'll put it on me too, y'all. I'm not mad about it. You know, listen, you can't, you can't be overweight. Unless you're over eat, okay? <laughs> Scott, me and Scott, yeah, there's a lot of us got a cup of Toby feels pretty good about that. Keep preaching, Joey. Keep preaching. Let's keep going. How many of y'all believe that Sunday is God's day? No, I'm being serious. It belongs to the Almighty. It belongs to the Almighty. They all belong to him, thank you. But the, the Bible talks about special times. But this is, a, let's just say, let's just say for giggles again, <laughs> for giggles again, that Sunday is God's day. 
let's say you get to do whatever you want, Dennis, Brother Dennis, every day of the week. You can go, you can go play golf one day. You know, you can get out and enjoy. You can badminton one day if you want to. You can get out there. You know what? Just sit on the front porch and watch the sunset. But you know what? When Sunday gets there, you've got to have a mindset, if it's right, that that's God's day. Do you know today in the church that Sunday is a perverted day? What? We've perverted Sunday. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. We have perverted what's Lord. I think, how many of y'all grew up when you couldn't buy alcohol on Sunday? Y'all, knew, y'all remember those times? I remember that time. And now we say it, it's not, you know, let them drink. What's it going to hurt? They drank it on Saturday night. They get drunk. Watch they? You know, the, the adage was, <laughs> listen, the adage was, all the people were going to do was just go buy more Saturday so they could drink Sunday. So why don't we just drink Sunday? You know what that is? You know what that is? It's a perversion of what's right. Think about what I'm saying now. Y'all hang in here with me. Don't lose me. It's a perversion of what's right. It belongs to God. If I'm not here, I justify why I'm not here or why I don't come. Whatever reason, the devil's going to say, I don't feel good this morning. How many of you have ever not felt good on a Sunday morning? Lynn, have I ever preached when I not felt good? You, you know the answer to it. There are times in my life when I'm so sick that I know I don't want to be here. There have been times when I've been preaching. But you know what? What is Sunday? What we said for, for giggles, what is Sunday? Whose day does it belong to? Say it louder. Say it louder. Say it louder. We're in his church on his day. Y'all cannot be ashamed of the Almighty. He is righteous. Hey, listen. I want, hey, listen. When I get to heaven one day, TKO, I want God to say, hey, I remember when you were down there sitting on your pew, and you're like, and Preacher Joe was yelling, hey, what day is this? My God. I want be the guy to say, hey, that day belongs to you, God. You understand what I'm saying? This day belongs to him. But if we pervert it, Archie, if we pervert it, oh, man, Joe, I got tickets to the Falcons game. Don't even try to explain that one to me. Joey, I got, hey, listen, I got baseball tickets. Man, do you, you know how much? I didn't pay for them, but somebody gave them to me. <laughs> Man, the, 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 the face value says they're $75 for this seat, and they gave them to me, and I can go on Sunday. What does Sunday belong to? The guy gave you all those other days. That was okay. The only way that you in your mind can go do that is to, to think that it's okay not to do something with God. And you know what? When you do that, Sunday, what have you done? You perverted it. Remember when Marchie said, Marchie laughed so hard about the pervert? Oh, that God would heal the Christian perverts. Heal them of their iniquity. Those of us who have perverted, Perverted. Listen to what Paul said when he saw that man. Oh, you of evil, of the devil, why is it that you pervert righteousness? Look at that, y'all. How many of y'all have ever perverted righteousness? I have. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you about it. I have. I let the devil listen to his lies. I listened to his speeches. I paid attention to his emails. I paid attention to the commercials. I paid attention to all. You know what? And it caused me to pervert the truth. We better be careful. (laughs) You'll see the devil's got a goal, Sammy. He does. Not only is he trying to pervert what's righteous, he's trying to mislead us. He's trying to take us down a wrong path. I'm going to tell you something, folks. I, I'm, a, I'm a different believer than a lot of y'all. Some in the room may agree or disagree with the state. I believe in eternal security. I do. I believe that with all of my heart. I, I'm a big believer in that. I believe that, that once you were saved, <laughs> y'all going to get mad at me for this. Once you were saved, you should always live like you're saved. <laughs> we like to say once we're saved, we stay saved no matter what we do. Brother Joey says once you're saved, Quit perverting righteousness and live like you're saved. 
Think about it. Perverts. The devil likes to mislead us. He likes to get us down the wrong path. You know why? Because, see, the devil is an enemy of righteousness. He is an enemy of all things good. And if he can take the good things in this world, I'm going to go back to it. How can we even think that killing an unborn baby is justifiable or right on any level? But we do. And there are a lot of people that will fight for this. The perversion of it. I'm going to tell you something, folks. I've spent a lot of time in church in my life. And I have watched throughout the years of church in my life the perversion of the saints. Perversion of people who were good church-going, God-fearing Christians who get caught up in the wrong thing. They get caught up and they say, Joey, I've got to work overtime, so I'm gonna, i got to work on Sunday, so you've got to understand that's part of my job, and i got to do this, and I can't be at church, and I'm going to quit coming to church, and all of a sudden, God gets you out of church. And you know what happens in those cool people's lives is a lot of times I've seen people that have that happen. Those people quit working on Sundays. You know what they also do? They don't ever go back to church either because they made it for a long time. The devil perverted it long enough in their minds that it was just fine with the path that they were on. I want to tell you something, folks. The devil's perversion in your mind long enough will get you down a long path because it'll get you to the last place that we talk about. We know that there's good and there's evil, and it's the place that the devil wants us to be more than anywhere else. He wants us to be right there standing on that fence right in the middle. And we do. We like, yeah, we're, we're fence straddlers. You ever thought about that? We like, we like to be on the fence. You know, you always say that the, the best politicians are the ones that are closest to the middle. Don't y'all? Y'all know that, don't you? The guy that... It's kind of tough to see if they're Republican or it's tough to see if they're Democrat. They're just right there in the middle. You really listen to this, this. And I love it, Lawrence. And you say that, and listen to what's so funny about a politician, what we say. You really can't tell what they are. Have y'all ever heard that before? It's kind of tough to tell if they're a Democrat. It's kind of tough to tell if they're a Republican. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. There's a lot of Christians that like to ride in the middle. <laughs> and you know what, guy? It's kind of tough to tell what they are. <laughs> it is. It's kind of tough to tell when they're not going, when they're not reading, when they're not representing, when you see them on Facebook, when they're, drink, when they're doing everything that looks like the world, and then they show up at church on Sunday and they talk about that they heard a great sermon, and then they go and live in the ways that we know to be wrong. It's kind of tough to tell, isn't it? Is your life one that's tough to tell? That, you know, there, there's people that are in this church, listen to me, that they claim to know Jesus. Listen to this, Lee, listen to what I'm about to say. They claim to know Jesus. They claim to worship the Almighty. They claim to be a Christian. But if God put a bullet, or somebody put a gun to my head and made me answer and said, Joey, what are they? I'd be scared of my answer. And that's what I see. Because they're so close to the middle. I don't know where they're at. I have no clue. There's nothing about their life that talks about that they want to go serve God or follow God or do what's right. And I'm not real sure if they've been saved from what's wrong. It's kind of tough to tell, isn't it, Sammy, sometimes? Thank God. Hey, praise God in heaven. I don't have to judge people. That's not my job. Thank God. I'll thank God for that. But Mike, that they're not going to put the bullet to, gun to my head and make that decision because that's not what I do. I don't get to judge people. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. My dad used to tell me my whole life, picture's worth a thousand words. You can say all you want to, but your little perverted Christian life that you walk says a lot more than you love the Almighty. Now, Jesus would go on to say, Jesus would get on to say, Remember, there's the father of righteousness. Y'all remember him? There's the father of evil. This is the root of the problem. Jesus would go on to say, you know, and I'm speaking kind of, Jesus would say, 
as he played with his string and his salt. You know, a person really can't serve two masters. They asked him one time about what was going on, about the difference between good and evil, and asked him about his thoughts or whatever. And Jesus thought about it for a minute. You know, it's really hard to serve two masters. It is. It's hard to serve. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I don't live this life. I love the one that, the wife that I have. I'm not getting on Mormonism, but maybe I am. I don't know how those jokers are married to several wives. <laughs> Praise God in heaven above, Jimmy. Listen to what I just said. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they do it. I, I, I'd tell any one of them that. I don't know how y'all do it. I'm going to tell you something. It's a lot for me to focus on the one that I have and make sure I'm on the right path with that one. Oh, God in heaven above, how could you do that with two? Why are so many men laughing right now? Yet really what I love, Lynn, in the room is the men that aren't laughing, like that know to just sit there and don't say a word, like Jimmy never moved. He's like, <laughs> he knows I'm playing. <laughs> but how would they do that? Because it's impossible to keep two people happy. There's no way to do that. I'm going to tell you something, folks. That's, 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 there's truth in that in our Christian walk. There's no way. There's no way to keep the Almighty happy. Listen to what I'm saying, Lawrence. There's no way that I can keep the Master happy in righteousness and fulfilling and walking and li living and telling and, you know what, and witnessing. There's no way that I can keep the Father happy and then just go live every which way I want to. Listen to what I said. There's no way to do it. Now, now here's what's funny. Y'all going to walk out of this room saying, Preacher Joey said that. But that's not a true statement, Brenda, because I didn't say that. The master said that. The master said, you can't serve two masters. He said, listen to this. You know what he said, guy? You know what he said? He said, you can't stand on the middle of the fence. In Revelations, listen to this. In Revelations, he would go on to say when he talked about the church at Laodicea, he described it even more vividly. He said, listen to the, what, what Jesus, that's a funny statement that Jesus Christ had in, when he was talking to the seven churches. Jesus said, listen to this, I wish, listen to that word, he says, I wish that you were cold or hot. You know what he said? I wish that you were one of the other. I, you know what he was saying? I wish that you were good or evil. I wish that you were one or the other. But he said, but because you're lukewarm. Oh, <laughs> Oh, because you're lukewarm, because you ride that fence, because nobody can tell what you are. I will spew you out of my mouth. I'm going to tell you something, folks. The church of today, God would spew us out of his mouth. We do not stand for what is righteous anymore. We have been, I don't care if it's because of the media. I don't care if it's because of society. We keep bucking down into every corner at every chance. We cow down to evil, and we have perverted a holy church. We have. We have. I'm going to tell you what. Shame on us. Shame on us. We tried so hard to get to that fence and stay as close to it as we can, just like the politicians do. Well, Joey, when I'm at work, I don't want to be the guy that's beating on my Bible. I don't want to be the guy that's in there talking about praying for people. I don't want to be the, the lady that, that, that's, that's going down the path that, man, I ain't going to go in her office. You know what? Let the world know what you stand for. Amen. Hey, listen, y'all. I want God to look down from the heavens above. Listen. Listen. I want the world to know what side I'm on. I don't care whether y'all think I'm a Democrat or Republican or what you think of me, but I'm going to tell you something. I want you to know that I am on the side of righteousness. Amen. Too many today, too many of us as Christians, too many of us as Christians, there's no earthly idea what we are because we are so perverted in the way we walk before the Almighty. And the devil got us there. We see no importance of doing what's right. Hey, you know, it's not that big a deal to come to church. It's not that big a deal to read your Bible. It's not that big a deal to pray. It's not that big a deal to go to Sunday school. These things are all not big deals. You know what those are? all are? Those are the devil's mechanism to pervert what is right. Joey, what is right? I've had people in my life, 
Brother Tommy, I've had people in my life tell me that they don't have to go to be a church to be a Christian. Okay? I've had, I have. Have any of you, anybody else in the room ever heard me say that? I can serve God wherever I want. That is not in this book. You know what that is? Listen to me. You listen to me. That is a perversion. That is a perversion of what is right. Because it ain't in here. But the Bible tells us to be here. God's word instructs us to be here. God's word begs us to be here. God tells us how promising it is to be in the fellowship of the church. He tells us and he encourages us. You know why? You know why, Scott, God wants us here? Because he knows that when you have a bad week, you know what, you want to quit and you want to give up, that you come to church and there's somebody that's going to grab you by the arm and say, hey, man, I know what you're going through. God knows the purpose of this place. God knows the, the importance of this fellowship. He does. He knows. Listen to me. God knows that it's right, but we've perverted it. Oh, Joey, I don't have to be there. I don't have to come here. I don't, you know, I cuss every now and then. It's okay. I just drink a little bit. It's not that big a deal. God, hey, listen, let's go through them all. We can have fun. You know, I can get, we can go through them all. It's okay, isn't it? You know, I just do that when I'm on vacation. It's not that big a deal. I don't do it all the time. You know what that is, y'all? Perversion of righteousness. You know who's the father of that? Satan. And keep listening to it. And one day, what's going to happen is, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen is, I want to talk about the generational things that will happen next. One day, I pervert righteousness to Matthew and Max, and then they say, well, we don't have to be at church every Sunday. It never was God's day. And then they grow up going to church half the time, and then their kids complain about going to church half the time at all, and then maybe their kids maybe come to eat. They're the, what are they, the Christers? Christmas and Easters. They come to Christmas and Easters. The Christers. That's what we always call them. Christmas and Easters. <laughs> and then maybe, Renee, a generation, a couple generations from now, my great-grandkids don't even go at all. You know why they don't go at all? Because of a dad who perverted righteousness. You better be careful, y'all. You better be careful because the Bible does say something. <laughs> my favorite, one of my favorite passages, I think it's the most truest thing in the Bible. You will reap what you sow. You, you keep sowing unrighteousness in your life. You sow unrighteousness in your family. You, sow, you pervert God's ways. You pervert that which is right. Don't be surprised when one day your kids wake up and they're not in church. Don't be surprised one day when your grandkids never hear about an almighty God. Sometimes that starts with us. Look, folks. The Bible says that, you know what? We're a shining light. A light that should not be hid. Isn't that right? Yeah, there's something different about us. That first verse I read, I want to cling back to it and I close with this. I don't want to wrap back around. So something cool happened in 1 Corinthians. I got a pretty cool mom and dad. I, I got a, I'll be honest, I'm going to go as far as say I got a pretty cool mother and father-in-law too. I'll, I'll give you all some credit too, Poppy and Nana. I got a really good mother and father-in-law who I believe raised Lynn right. I believe my parents raised me right. But I'm not on the right side of righteousness because of my choice. Okay. The Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians 1.30, y'all probably missed it. I missed it the first time I read it this week. It says, but by his doing, but by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus. I'm going to tell you something today. If you're here today and you're on a path that perverts, that you're not going down a path, listen, you can go to church. You can try to do the right thing, and you're never going to find yourself in the right place. You're going to, you, you know what, God, you can even dress up. You can put on a coat and tie. 
There's a lot of people that have come into churches and put on coats and ties and dresses. And listen to this. Y'all, y'all ready for this? And they're going to die and go to hell. They're going to die and go to hell. They tried their best to do the right thing and never realizing the only way they could ever do it was to get the right thing inside of them. That's what's missing. I'm going to tell you something. I, I, believe, I believe with all my church, I mean with all my heart, the church is what it's, it is today because it has come something closer to a YMCA than it has the house of God. It has. I'm going to tell you something, folks. You want to tell me how, we, how, how do we get to where we're going? How do we get on the path of righteousness? We need to get Jesus in the right place. But by his doing, by his doing, that we are the child of Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we're so grateful, we're so thankful for all the many wonderful things that you've done for us. God, not sure if I preached it the right way, not sure if I went down the right path, God, but I know the truth is what it is. I pray that be of the Holy Spirit because it is not, this is not on me. God, I pray today if there's one here that's never accepted you as their Savior. Gosh, I know if they were intelligent enough to say that they would look at the evidence of their life, if they were smart enough to say there's nothing about my life that says that I am. But God, the best part is it's just for them to be honest with themselves. God, there are a lot of people in this room that have lived a lie. I'm talking about an absolute one. And the devil has told them they're going to be just fine. They're going to be okay. Hey, look, you go there once a month. You go there once a year. You go whenever it makes you feel right. You'll be just fine. And God, they're not. The reason they're not driven, the reason they're not going down a path, the reason they're on the wrong side of the fence, the reason they can't make right decisions, the reason they can't do the right thing, the reason that they keep getting pulled is because they've never asked you spiritually to come into their heart. God, this morning I pray to Jesus, to God, Lord, if there's one here today, a man or a woman that's just honest and says, God, that's what I need more than anything. I need Jesus to make a change in my life. God, I need him to show me what's right. And I want him to come in today. Dear God, Lord, I want somebody to be honest. And God, today, for the Christians, the message that those that spend their time on the fence so the world can't see who they are, God, I pray that they move hard to let the, God, let the folks out there know that, God, we stand for something. We stand for righteousness. We stand for what's right. And sometimes standing up for what you believe, you know what? You're going to get punched in the face. But God, learn to take the punches. Lord, let our Christianity be tough. Lord, don't let it be shallow. I just pray to God that you'd be with this church in this time. Lead us, guys, and direct us as only you can. For it's in your almighty name we pray, Lord. Amen and amen. I want to take this time and thank you for watching and worshiping with us today. My name is Joey Dibman. I'm with Concord Missionary Baptist Church. If you are not a follower of Jesus Christ and have never asked him to come into your heart, I'd like to take a few moments to help you do just that. You know, the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know, this is open to every one of us that requests because Romans 10, 13 goes on to say even deeper, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So today, if you would like to pray with me, let's bow our heads in prayer to our Lord and Savior and ask him if you're seeking him to come into your heart today. Lord, I just want to take the opportunity that if there's someone out there today And dear God, Lord, they're seeking you. Dear God, Lord, and maybe they're at a place in their life where they can't see. But today, through the Holy Spirit, which has pricked their heart, through your word, not the words that I preach, but through the holy word of an awesome father. God, I pray today, dear God, Lord, that they would be enlightened. And God, I'd ask them today to pray with me and say, Lord, I want to be a believer. Dear God, Lord, I want to believe in the fact that I know that you walked on this earth. Lord, I want to know that you died for my sins. God, I want to believe in the fact that on the third day you resurrected from a tomb and you sit on the right hand of God. And today, Lord, I want to ask you to come into my heart. Lord, if there's one out there praying with us today, dear God, Lord, that's seeking you. Lord, I pray that they would say this prayer with me today, dear God, Lord, and invite Jesus Christ into their heart to forgive their sins. Lord, we thank you for your blessings upon us. 
God, we thank you for what you're doing for us. I just pray that you'd be with us to this moment in time. And dear God, Lord, and show us the things that you'd have us to see. In Christ's name we pray, Lord. Amen. You know, if you've done that today, if you've taken the opportunity to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, you know, he died on a cross close to 2,000 years ago and he walked on the earth. The Bible teaches us that everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord and believes in their heart that he has risen from the grave shall be saved. So if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior today, you know, I want to invite you to, you know what, into your new relationship with your Father. And I want to, to maybe help you, maybe through watching the videos as you learn and you grow, but maybe try to find a, a church that's close to you, a church home where you can go with other believers and walk with them and learn to grow with them. I invite you today also that maybe if today you've asked Christ to come into your heart, that, that you know what, maybe you would let us know. And drop us a postcard to say, you know, hey, I listen to these videos on YouTube. I appreciate what you've done. But I would like for y'all to know that on this date, on so-and-so, that I asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart. We'd invite you, and, and if you look at the address that's on the screen today, and, and maybe send a postcard. And then, you know what, if you don't want to write it down, maybe through email. There will be a, an email address that you can address to our church at Concord Missionary Baptist Church. And you could just email us and let us know what's going on in your life. But even better than that out there today, maybe you are a, a Christian today and maybe you're not here in Temple, Georgia with us, but you're in your walk with Jesus today and you're, you're having some valleys that you're having to go through. And, and maybe you need some, to seek some prayer requests and some other shoulders to lean on. I invite you to also to email us or drop us a card. We meet on Wednesday nights to pray. We take these things before the Father. We take these things very seriously. and We come together as a group as we pray to our Father. So, I'd invite you to, to send those prayer requests to us, and I promise you that we'll take them and put them on the altar and bring them before the Lord. Once again, I want to thank so much for you taking your time to come spend with us and worship with us, you know, through song, through word, but more, more than anything else, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May God bless you and your family.